Okay, we're at the site of the action on um, December 31st, mid-afternoon, it says. This is the site of Hayes' Brigade. It says that it is the uh, hinge of the folding pocket knife. So, um, this was like the salient. This is where the, uh, the uh, Federal forces had fallen back to by that time. They had gotten so pushed back, so overwhelmed. Apparently there were 13,000 casualties during that morning uh, and early afternoon. This was mid-afternoon. And in front of us is called uh, what they called Hell's Half Acre. It's also known as the Round Forest. Um, <clears throat> and this is the site of, of where the federal government forces held their ground against not quite overwhelming confederate attacks um, just beyond we see this traffic coming in is the visitor center in the main the cotton field the the main uh, scene of action so this would have been the confederate right this was where I'm standing is the, uh, the confederate left came up here to see Hazen's um, memorial and we're going to see that right now this guy was a colonel and he decided not to give ground anymore and his men followed him and he uh well it could be said that he saved the day but who knows if he gave way someone else might have but we'll never know because those are the facts he stood his ground here and he gave the rest of the army on this side anyway the opportunity to regroup and reconfigure itself. They call this Hazen's Monument, but it says it's dedicated to the soldiers of that unit who stood their ground here. And we'll read this. Something to the memory of the soldiers who fell at, I'm gonna say Stones River, I don't know. Oh, here we go, here's a little sign down here. Hazen's Brigade, uh, to the memory of his soldiers who fell at Stones River, their faces toward heaven, their feet toward the foe, inscribed at the close of the war. Chickamauga, Chattanooga. Oh, we got a little, got a little burial ground going on here too. No, that's cool. I didn't know anything about that. So I don't know if these are actual, you know, graves or not, but they certainly are uh, gravestones, markers. It's interesting that he put anything on top of that, no obelisk or whatever. Maybe it was there and it fell off, I don't know. Kind of cool. Right up, their backs are right up against to the uh, <clears throat> the um, railroad tracks. The railroad. So that's pretty cool. Those typically don't historically don't change over the course of time. They, you know, that was the original bed more than likely right there. So I got to find out more about this uh, little cemetery here, but we're gonna can imagine this is an incredible, incredible sight right here. What this would have looked like. Here's an interp sign over here. We'll go check it out. See what it says. More cemetery markers, grave grave markers. Slave soldier citizen. A tombstone can only sell so much, but other documentation. You could tell the two veterans lie here in graves just outside the wall. Documentation. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. So he was a USCT, they didn't want to bury him with the other Union Federal 
troops so they buried him outside it says here he was born in Kentucky no one knows oh he bought this this he owned this farm apparently but I would take a lot of guts so he owned this farm remember the USCT he passed 43 years after the end of the war oh I see okay so he didn't own it at the time of the battle he worked here in the National Cemetery received a pension and was a landowner cool that's cool stuff but it's a really good uh, illustration of the treatment that these men received, that these people received by everybody. Amazing sight, an amazing sight. 